Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with a theater mode gameplay analysis of a game I got while solo searching the Big Team Battle playlist on an alternate account. I got the map dispelled and the game type is Big Team Slayer. And during this theater mode uh, film analysis, I want to show you guys how I end up getting 46 kills and zero deaths in this game using only the Wasp. Now, their enemy players are not, you know, terribly good or anything like that. They do have at least six people on their team at all points. Um, my team actually has quitters far before the enemy team does. So just kind of, kind of going to walk you through this gameplay, show you what I'm thinking from my perspective. Not going to pause too much throughout the game, will occasionally, but mainly going to just walk you through how I got this uh, unfreaking believable perfection. So to start off, my teammate tries to grab the Wasp here. I don't know what would have happened if he would have grabbed it. Um, this is Slayer, so I don't necessarily have to play uh, super aggressive on this tower off the left here. Normally I'm going to go over here on Assault or CTF. Uh, but in this case, um, I'm just going to kind of hang back behind the rocks and just kind of watch uh, for the enemy uh, Wasp. So I can see the enemy Wasp over there, and I make this really aggressive play. now. Some of you may be wondering, okay, why did I just do this? In a game against Sweaties, you're probably not going to want to pull this off. But because I have these tree line that is kind of blocking my view from this enemy wasp, and I know this wasp is shooting at something else, I'm going to try to take the opportunity and aggressively push up on him. Now in theater mode, it doesn't show, but there's a yellow lock-on before you get the red lock-on. And all my goal is to hit him with two missiles. And I do successfully, and my teammate Rev EMPs him as he falls to the ground like that. It looked like he went AFK, but uh, my teammate just EMPed him there, and you can see my teammate just got sniped who had the plasma pistol. So I'm just hanging out behind this tower, and I'm going to try to use my height advantage to see where the enemy players are. Now, something you're going to see me do during this entire film is you're going to see me use my third person camera to see where the enemy players are. So just now, I, I saw this guy run down the ramp right here. And so I'm going to immediately engage him because I'm pretty sure uh, that he did not see me. So I'm going to quickly jump out here and get this kill. Hit myself on the tree there, but that's okay. Um, then I'm going to move up. Now, this is something that a lot of players don't uh, take into account, is that you can hide for very long periods of time and just use the third-person camera to see where the players are. Now, again, right here, this is kind of an underrated thing. I'm using the tree to block line of sight with these players. You notice how I came up like this, using the tree to block line of sight and then go off to the left and start shooting them. It's very important, very underrated um, to do that. Okay, I'm always trying to use other objects to block line of sight and stay alive. Now, I have no shields here, so I want to try to get out of here. And notice again how I'm using the rock and the tree to my left to block line of sight with whoever is shooting me over here off to the left. These guys don't see me, which is why I paused to get one of these kills. But I know I still have no shield and I'm on fire, so I need to get out of here. So I'm just waiting for my shields to come back and regenerate, which they have. I'm going to skip this ghost entirely. I do not want to engage this ghost. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm watching my radar. During this entire thing, I'm actually just watching my radar. Because one of the main spawns of the enemy players is actually right here in this location. They have some main spawns on the right side of their base, the top side of their base, and the left hand side of the, their base. And this is Slayer, so technically they can spawn across the map, but that's more rare. But right here in this position, I'm just watching my radar very, very, very closely. Now I can see I'm getting shot from the enemy base, but that's okay. So I'm just watching my radar. I don't see anybody in this location, so I'm going to go ahead and back up to my base. And it's okay to do this just simply because it's Slayer. You can play passive, and I'm going to just go ahead, going to go ahead and you know, push with my team over here on the left-hand side. They end up taking out that guy. Now I see that they have a sniper. I can see in the kill feed that my teammate just got sniped on the plasma launcher pad below me. So I'm going to try to use my third-person perspective to see where he is, and sure enough, there he is. Now. Some of you may be thinking, okay, well, this is a really rash move to jump out like this. I know for a fact that none of these guys see me because they're not shooting me. They're all looking at my teammates who are coming out right there, okay? And they're also watching the sniper line trail. You see you see where all these people are looking, okay? See where these guys are looking? They're not looking up, 
okay? And this guy for sure is scoped in. And if this guy is scoped in, there's no way he's going to see me. Look how high I am up in the air. Look at that. Okay, there's no way that he sees me. This map, in my personal opinion, is way too easy to spam in terms of going high up in the air. Never forget to do that when you're using this tower behind me right here for cover. It's so important. Now what you're going to see me do here is you're not going to see me fire my machine gun first too much. Okay, You're going to see me swoop in and fire my missiles first because I want to apply maximum damage first and then clean them up with the machine gun to make sure I get the kill. Okay, Now right here, I do end up getting a pretty high multi-kill. There's the triple, uh, there's the overkill on that guy, almost gets away. now. Uh, that guy was kind of AFK, so this multi-kill doesn't count, and this guy is definitely AFK, so this multi-kill is not impressive at all. Right here, though, these two kills, and the way I get them, I get them with, with one missile fire, okay? Two missiles, okay? Notice how I weaken these guys first with the, my machine gun, okay? Weaken them first with my machine gun, then hit them with a missile for the kill catastrophe. That's two kills with one missile barrage. Just to reiterate, that's not a impressive multi-kill at all, because those three people with, were AFK, I didn't even bother saving it or clipping it. So now over here, I can see that the players have spawned on the enemy teleporter exit. Notice how that spawn that I mentioned earlier, notice how he spawned there, and they've spawned there and there. Okay, that guy may have come through the teleporter, who knows, alright? But just keep in mind, what I said earlier about that spawn is absolutely true. So I go ahead and back up all the way to my base, because I see that my sniper rifle is coming up. Now, my, my, what my thought process here is, okay, the enemy team might be going over here and flanking, but I quickly get shot by a DMR, and I can tell it's a DMR because a DMR is gonna spawn over here in this location, so I know the enemy team has made it over there. So what do I do? I just sit here and hide, and I wait for my shields and my wasps to regenerate. Your shields and your wasp are interdependent from your actual shear bar at the top of your screen. You should not be paying attention to your shield bar at the top of your screen when you're in a wasp. You should be physically looking at your wasp to see if your shields are regenerating. That's probably the number one mistake everyone makes in a wasp is that they don't fully pay attention to the actual physical color of the shields. If you've lost your shields in your wasp, you're taking permanent health damage. And none of that is reflected by your shield or health bar at the top of your screen. Those are not related to your wasp. So I see this guy over here, and this second guy that pops out actually surprises me. Um, this could have been really a bad scenario because I've lost the glass on my cockpit so I can get sniped out once I or shot out once my shields are down on the wasp. Luckily I end up taking these two three people out. Now I don't know what this guy is thinking. He could have definitely tracked me down but this is the second wasp the enemy team has had. I go ahead and take him out very very quickly just to make sure that he's not a presence on the map. Now you're gonna notice what I do here. I do end up chasing this kill a little bit but the instant I get hit by this sniper, okay, the instant I get hit by this, I back down. I am not going to let this guy snipe me out because like two or three sniper shots and he can easily kill me here. Four to the body is a definite kill for him right now when I'm on fire. So you have to be really careful. So right here, I'm just kind of spamming shots across the map, trying to get him to put one shot into my shields because it's not going to do any damage to my wasp. If he puts one bullet into me, one snipe bullet into me, when I have full shields in my wasp, he just wasted a snipe bullet because I can just regenerate that on my wasp shield. It's not going to do actually any physical damage to me. Now what I did just here is a mistake. Okay, This is a completely, it's a bad play, okay? Because I assume that this guy is not looking at me anymore and that he thinks I'm still over there to the right. A sweaty team would never do that. They would light me up if I did what I just did here because I'm trying to track down this player who just went inside here. Don't ever do this with the wasp. Always maintain your position behind a tower or behind a, um, a surface first, and then peek out using your third person camera to see where the enemy players are. Just like I'm doing here. So I rise up really high into the air again. Guess who I'm going to target first, okay? Notice my target prioritization. Who am I targeting first? the guy with the sniper. It is really, really important that you do that, okay? I cannot stress it enough, and I'm firing my missiles first. When you're surprising a player, do not start by shooting your chain gun first, 
because they, they will thrust your pack and make it a lot harder for you to hit them with your missiles. So I almost get a direct impact. Now this guy's in a turret. I'm gonna almost hit him dead on, but I don't wanna stay in this position for very long. I see this guy's hijacking my teammate and I'm not able to help him out. Now this guy ended up having their plasma pistol. He just used the plasma pistol to take down that tank. So it's likely that they're gonna lose the plasma pistol for like the next 30 seconds or so till it respawns unless someone on the team picks it up again. So I know that the plasma pistol, which originally spawned there, it's not gonna be there for some time now. Now this guy, and you're gonna notice a lot of enemy players, they really need to be opening fire and shooting me. Um, this is just the case when you solo queue into a lot of games. Um, what I find is that people who haven't played Big Team Battle for a while, they kind of think that it's up to their teammates or their teammates with power weapons to take down a vehicle. You never want to do that. You always want to be shooting uh, the wasp with your assault rifle or BR, just keeping its shields weak so that your teammates can do permanent damage to the health. Now, I, I don't know why my teammate was shooting at me there. Um, that's actually my teammate in the tower for some reason. Um, but notice how I'm using the cover, okay? I'm using my third person camera to see where they are. Now, look what I spot here, okay? Just like I said a little bit earlier. The plasma pistol has respawned. And who's going for it? Probably the same guy. Now, what would be the dumbest play I could possibly make here? To try to pop out and shoot this guy right as he's about to get the plasma pistol, okay? I'm not gonna do that because his teammates already know I'm here. There's two people above, several people below. I didn't know those people were below, but you get the idea. So what I'm gonna do is as soon as he picks this up, I'm gonna immediately make my getaway. I'm gonna run the opposite direction and run the heck away from here. Now you may be wondering, okay, well that's a, re you know, that's a really passive play, why would I do that? This is Slayer, okay? Staying alive for the longest possible period of time and maximizing your lethality on the battlefield is way more important than making some desperate move on the enemy base just to try to kill a plasma pistol guy, just because you saw him grab it. Now, uh, my, the, my, the tank that's on my team was really good at taking out the enemy wasp. I was trying to go for it. I was actually timing the enemy wasp here, but I do also remember that they have a plasma pistol, okay? So, that's why I'm hiding behind cover, okay? And look who has a plasma pistol. This guy, okay? I guarantee you that most players who were timing the enemy wasp and going for it would have just swooped straight in, tried to get out and get it, and would have gotten destroyed or EMP'd or something like that, but no. I'm always keeping track visually of where this guy is, and I don't even try to engage them. Just because you see the guy with a plasma pistol doesn't mean you want to shoot him. You want to try to take engagements with the wasp of people who are not looking at you, or people who don't know that you're there, basically. Okay? So I see that this guy is trying to get the incineration cannon, so I take him out. That guy just kind of spawned or teleported out, so I'm going to take him out. This is just kind of covering our flank from the side. Now, our tank is still top middle, providing really good cover fire. I saw that guy just grab the OS, so I'm gonna go here and engage him. And what I'm about to do is actually something a lot of people don't think to do, but it's something you really need to. You can chase kills in this tunnel by doing this, okay? You can just flank around, go down, and flank them out of this tunnel, and I get the kill. It's, many people are not expecting you to do that. Now, once again, I didn't need to go out that far. How I, you know, kind of randomly went out here and tried to shoot that person. There's no need for me to do that. I'm being a little bit, you know, aggressive in this gameplay. Against a sweaty team, you would never, ever, ever want to do something like that. So right here, I'm just kind of going in quick and fast because I'm trying to push these guys back. I don't intend to get any of those kills. That's kind of why you see me make that maneuver. I'm trying to track down if they still have a plasma pistol or where this guy is, but I can see that the plasma pistol has respawned here, so I know that I'm safe. And this is something you have to be doing. Um, it's why I'm kind of pulling the camera into third person in case any of you guys are watching on mobile. You can actually see the plasma pistol there, otherwise it'd be pretty hard to see. I'm always keeping track of where the different weapons are on the map, or trying my best to. And if you're not doing that when you're in the Wasp, you're probably gonna die pretty fast. Um, you need to be keeping track of the enemy team's Wasp spawn, um, where their plasma pistol is, probably are the two key things. Now, I want you to notice what I just saw here. This guy switches to the gunner, and I immediately disengage. I immediately run away, because that gun can melt your wasp. But I hit him with one rocket, and I back down. My shields took all that damage. I don't know how that enemy sniper doesn't see me or doesn't end up shooting me. 
he switches back to the driver's seat and I clean him up. Now I go back here because I thought that was an enemy sniper and it was. This guy, the Turter guy, 7000, was definitely the worst player on their team. I think he just had his first few games or something. I, I really have no idea. Um, I should have been more careful with my aim of those rockets there. Um, once again, my tank is really good at taking out the enemy wasp, but <laughs> I wanted to get in that wasp. So it's very lucky, very circumstantial that I'm allowed to get back in this wasp. I know that normally does not happen in a gameplay. Um, so my friendly tank was taken out up here. I catch this guy flanking. You'd be amazed at how many people you'll catch just by rotating back around to your side and just looking around. Many people who are flying a wasp, they make the mistake of looking at the dead center of their screen the whole time. I'm rarely looking at the dead center of my screen when I'm in the wasp. I mean, barely ever. Unless I'm actually firing or trying to shoot precise rockets. Only then am I actually doing that. And notice the flanks, okay? Notice how, uh, here's another spawn, okay, right over there. That is why I'm rotating back to my base to try to relieve the pressure on my teammates um, who are being pushed here. This guy is trying to nade me. They both try to grenade me. They both are really kind of clueless in terms of where I am. This guy has a sniper, so I take him out. I honestly don't know why I shot his body an extra there. I do it on the next player as well. And I can't remember why. Maybe they teabagged me in a previous game. I can't remember why. But, you know, I, I quickly realize there's no point in doing that. I barely ever do that, honestly, in any games. And if I'm playing anyone who I know, I do not teabag or shoot bodies or anything like that because I just find it to be disrespectful. I, I just, that's not the kind of persona I want to exude. But since I'm on an alternate profile, it doesn't really matter as far as this is concerned. So my, our tank gets taken out again, top middle. Um, I get the bodyguard medal, which is saving three teammates in a row, although I didn't save the tank there. Now the enemy w sniper is up, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly go back over to their base. And here is a spawn. These two people literally just spawned on that right-hand side. Like I said earlier in the film, there's a main spawn kind of over there on the right side of the base. So I take this guy out, and then I'm going to take this next guy out. Now notice how I didn't let my chain gun overheat here. Notice how at the very, very end, I was just lightly tapping the trigger to maintain the chain gun. That's an absolutely legitimate strategy. The number one thing you don't want to do is you, A, do not want to engage three people at once, and B, you never want to let your chain gun overheat. You can take out two people with your missiles and chain gun, but at that point, your chain gun's almost going to be overheated, and you really need to kind of back down, let your wash shield regenerate, and that kind of thing. Most of the time, you're only going to be able to take out one player at a time. That's just the normal way it goes, I guess. So I'm rotating back to my side, just trying to find if there's any stragglers running around the map. And you can see that my teammate is sniping up here. And this is one of the reasons why I rotate back, is because this guy's kind of going to be scoped in, so he's not going to be watching his radar. So what I can do is kind of provide that extra support on his right-hand flank. I see this guy going for the ensign cannon, but I just kind of got shot. So I'm just waiting to watch where people are. So I'm just going to cast this guy because that guy's probably going to be the easiest kill for the least you know amount of damage to me. That's the unfreaking believable. 40 kills in a row without dying. So I'm going to use kind of this low area. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that when you hover this low with the wasp, the wasp automatically... Um, it hovers slightly, ever so slightly above the ground, just like the ghost does. But if you hold the down button, that the uh, left bumper for most of you, um, then you can hover even closer to the ground. And what I'm doing here is essentially tapping it slightly so that I try to maintain uh, that vertical distance as close to the ground as possible. So I'm going to use this tower again because I see that the enemy team has a sniper. And I'm just going to try to sense out where he is. Now that guy on the right, their, their base just spawned. Shooting my rockets first, and then cleaning up. Okay. Now there, I you know I shot my machine gun first, because he I'm pretty sure he already knows I was in, in the general area. So I'm going to go ahead and run back here. I have seven kills remaining. Now this is a very rare find. I don't know who dropped this. Very, you know, very, very lucky. I end up putting myself to almost no shields here. 
but I get back in the wasp and um, gameplay luckily continues. There are several very lucky moments during this gameplay, I'm not going to lie, you know. So I see they have a sniper again, and once again I'm going to climb into the air, going to try to find where he is. Now I see this guy going for the plasma pistol, so I quickly take him out. It's a very good play, it's very important to do that. Take this guy out as well. Now I'm not going to be able to kill him. Um, this guy has a sniper though. He probably could snipe me out, um, but he's going to end up being the final kill. Now, uh, if I rewind in the film just a little bit here, one thing I wanted to tell you guys is that I actually have my left stick set to aggressive. I'm using an Elite controller, so I have my bottom right hand paddle underneath my controller set to go down on, in the Wasp, and my bottom left hand paddle set to go up. This way I can have both my index fingers on the triggers, both my thumbs on the movement and aiming thumbsticks, and both of my uh, fingers underneath my controller on the left and right paddle uh, respectively. So I can go up, down, and turn without you know, sacrificing my aim or being, you know, not being able to shoot or something like that. If you wanna see my full you know, button layout, you can check the description of this video. But guys, uh, thank you for watching uh, this theater film slash gameplay analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, there's the perfection and the unfrig. Now, uh, if you want to see another video like this, I'm going to put an annotation to it or a key card for those of you mobile users. I have another uh, uh, unfrig I got on Risen if you are interested in that as well. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up or a like. It helps other people find the video when you do that. Um, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.